Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. My name is uh, Eric Schimmelfenny, and I'm, a, I'm many things, but um, I've been a kitchen designer for many years. Um, and I'm going to show you a workflow, kind of a workflow that I came up with for using dynamic components um, in SketchUp. So I started using, I was in, uh, one of the early people to play around with uh, dynamic components, and I, uh, I utilized them pretty quickly to make myself more efficient. Um, just by show of hands, how many people have used a dynamic component before? Sort of? OK, of those people that raised their hands, like more than one component or? OK, cool. Um, there, there's this, this chart. I, I, if I had slides, I would have put it in here. But it's, I, dynamic components to me are, you know, if you have a uh, sort of a graph of effort expended and, and time elapsed, someone who solves a problem normally through drawing just kind of you know, moves through the problem that way. And dynamic components are a lot of effort up front, but then the payoff is that you get this thing that you can repeat and use over and over again. Um, so I'm just going to take you through some cool dynamic components, some ones that I, I've made, some that are available in the 3D warehouse, and just kind of give you a taste of what they can do and a little bit of an idea how to build them. Um, I'm going to do a three-hour mega nerd session on how to actually build them um, tomorrow. So I'm pretty casual the way I present. So if anyone has a question or is confused about something, just shout it out. And if it's relevant, I'll answer it. And if it's not, I'll yell at you a lot, and we'll, we'll move on. Um, let me show you some of the ones that I, I'm most, most comfortable with. So the way that these dynamic components came about, this is the set of components that I made um, for kitchen design. So in, in my world, we had this software called 2020. And you have to, um, every kitchen designer is forced to use it. Uh, how many people have heard of 2020? OK, yeah, it's horrible. Um, it's, uh, it's really, it's really, it's, and that's not because I'm going to schedule everything. It is a terrible piece of software. But what the, the redeeming feature that it has is that you have these cabinets that you can drag and drop in catalogs, and you can type in dimensions, and you can change them. And I was in the showroom, and I'm like, I hate this program. I want to use SketchUp because it's so much more awesome. And they said, well, show me how fast you can draw a cabinet. And I'm pretty fast at SketchUp. I could draw any one of these cabinets in here in maybe 15 minutes, adding all the detail, you know, the, the door styles, um, getting it to the right dimension, and all that. You can drag a drop and cabinet in SketchUp, uh, rather in 2020, in a second, and you can resize it by just typing in a new dimension, provided the program doesn't crash. Um, so I could not just, oh, seriously, it's awful. Every time you turn it on, it's like you're showing, to do, and it corrupts your files. It's, it's horrible. So I was, as soon as dynamic components came out, I thought, this is it. Now I can make cabinets really fast. So. This is one, this is a really basic one that I made here. I don't know why I didn't go to, OK. So for those of you that have not used dynamic components, when you get one, if you download one in the 3D warehouse, there's this little green badge that kind of denotes it as a dynamic component. And once you get one, you can just right click on it and go to dynamic components. And depending on how the component is built, it's going to bring up this list, a, a list of options that someone has provided in the component. So in this case, if it took me 15 minutes to draw this cabinet. To resize it, I would have had to delete the doors, uh, take the side of the box, move it over, push-pull the top panel and the bottom panel, and maybe kind of put the doors back on and extend them. So now if I want to make this thing a little wider, uh, I can just t say 30 or, or shorter, 20 inches, and type in the dimension. And the thing, it parametrically resizes. So if you have a, a cabinet box that's a three-quarter side and a three-quarter side and a three-quarter top and a three-quarter bottom that are captured by those two sides, this box will keep those at 3 quarters of an inch, no matter what size you make it. Um, and to sort of explain that a little more simply, if you do it on something like a shelf, like this, so if I make the shelf 30 inches, you can see the thicknesses of these sides. Sorry about the low resolution of this screen. You can see they maintain their thicknesses. So that, that's parametric modeling. That makes sense to everyone? OK. So in these components, you, you, you can get, you can get a, an insane level of detail. So if we look at the um, kind of the options on here, I actually got to a point where the, uh, the dialog boxes were, were getting too long. How many people have designed a kitchen in here before? OK, all right. We got, we, that's a lot, actually. That's awesome. Um, so you can do, just to kind of take you through some of the things uh, you can do here, you can change the height of these. So if you want to make this, for whatever reason, a, a little bit taller or shorter of a cabinet. You can change the depth. Um, these have a feature in them that you can 
have them round to the nearest whatever measurement. So some of the cheaper lines that we would sell only went to the nearest three inch. And the reason why that feature is in there, because in addition to being able to type in the dimension like I've just shown you, you can actually use the scale tool as well. And so you can just take these things and they'll recalculate automatically. So what's happening here is you can see that the request with, for those of you that can't see this, I use the scale tool. So it's trying to make a 20.124 inch cabinet. And I have this set to round to the nearest quarter of an inch. So the actual width has been rounded to 20.25. And the reason why that is, is a lot of, yes, question. Is the physical size that like on the model? It's the physical size, yeah. Okay. Yep, so this cabinet and the way, the way at least where I worked and the, the way we thought is that a, a 20 inch wide cabinet is 20 inches from here to here. Um, and you want it, you want to round it. You know, cabinet company's gonna laugh at you if you try to order a 20.124 inch uh, cabinet. And the reason why that's in there too is sometimes uh, I am uh, lazy. I like I like computers to do uh, most of the work for me. So I'll kind of design a space, and and you get to a point where you have an opening, and rather than like take the tape measure tool and measure it, I'll just take a cabinet and scale it in there and see what I've got. You know, and if it's to the nearest three inch increment, I can figure out if I'm a little bit too big or a little bit too small. And yeah, it's funny, my laziness is turned into me spending epic amounts of time building these components. So it's like I'm weirdly lazy, but then it's, yeah, it's odd. Um, and if you guys knew me, the patience that it takes to build these is really not something that's in my nature, but um, anyway. So this is the cabinet line. Um, I just wanna show you a couple other, we're gonna come back to that. I'll show you a couple other components and then I'll kind of take you guys through the methodology that I used um, to build these. So these cabinets really, at the end of the day, they're just a bunch of boxes. You know, they can get a little boring after a while. So we'll look at some cooler stuff, and then we'll go back to the boring boxes. Um, this is one that Aiden built, actually. Has anybody ever had to figure out a spiral staircase? All right, lots of math involved in this. Um, I used to work at a wood shop, and we did spiral staircases, and we had a really fun story where the owner, and I can say this because he's not here, um, measured it wrong, and it was four feet too short. And I remember, but it was, that was a whole story. It was going into a silo, and it was this whole thing. But um, I learned very early on all of the, no, not all of the math. I was made aware of all of the math. I'm not gonna tell you that I could make spiral staircases in my sleep. We didn't have this, um, but this spiral staircase is pretty incredible. Let's change uh, the outside radius, we'll make it 90 inches. And this is a pretty heavy duty component, so you can see it's calculating. But I just changed the outer radius of this, and this did what took a two days worth of math. I mean, it's like, it, it's mind blowing what, what this can do. I, I am not gonna tell you guys today or tomorrow how to build one of these because I, I couldn't do it. There, there is an insane amount of math. Um, real simple one, the shelf I showed you. Kind of go into one, I don't know why these dialogues aren't refreshing, but we'll just kind of go in here. So this one has got some more features on it. You can change the base color, so we'll change it to yellow, and it'll swap out automatically. This one's got a price, which is interesting. Um, you can run reports. Um, how many people are aware of SketchUp's make, uh, generate report function? Okay, so like Alex was showing earlier, you can generate reports on all of these attributes as well. We'll talk about attributes in a little bit. I already lost track of time, so let me know when I'm halfway. Thank you. Um, the picket fence, this is another fun one. You can use the scale tool in this and it will recalculate. Um, sometimes it will recalculate all the pickets for you. Hang on, go into here. I was teaching, oh, that's right. Yeah, it can change the spacing on this one. There's another picket fence. I was actually teaching a, um, uh, a group of architects, young architecture students, and really good at SketchUp, right? This guy had this beautiful model of a house and he had uh, the, the balusters for, for an outside deck. They weren't, they weren't even components. And, and he goes, yeah, right? <laughs> so so we, we were, he showed me this model at the, at the beginning and, and he's like, why is this so hard to edit? I'm like, stand by, we're gonna get to components like after lunch. So we go through the whole thing and I showed him how to make just a, a dumb component, right? And we made all the balusters and I did the copy thing. And he was like, you're gonna be kidding me. That's gonna save me so many hours. Like, oh, well, how about this? And he's like, oh, yeah, he was, he was pretty much crying <laughs> by, by, the, by the end of it. Um, yeah, it was, it was a, a great and very sad day for him as well. <laughs> what is, oh, here we go, here we go. I got two dialogues open. So this is another one. So 
This, this one's an interesting one. This has a miter on it. I should blow this up so you guys can see it. If you guys can't see something, just yell at me because it looks great on my screen here and it looks not so great up here. So the way that, the way that, this, the way that dynamic components work is they, they essentially, you really boil down what's going on, they use the scale tool on all the parts, right? So if we look at this, if, if we were to model this just normally, we'd make this a component and those the same component and probably that. So if you were manually resizing this, you would just click into this component and you kind of like drag that up and make it taller and then both of these would, would go and, and you would move that. Makes sense, right? So if you were to take the scale tool, now what we wouldn't do to make this one taller is take the scale tool and stretch it because it's going to rack our miter, right? Because we want to maintain this width, but we want to make it taller. Now, if I made a dynamic component out of this, you can't just make four pieces, make them into a component and give them dimensions. So I'm going to turn on hidden geometry here, and you'll see that this is uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, six, whatever. It's a bunch of different components. Eight, thank you, thank you. Math, not my, uh, not my strong suit today. So this piece is actually a separate corner. This is a separate corner, and this is a separate corner. And th to show you the math formulas of how this works, so we're going to turn off the, um, this is the component options thing that to kind of show the user facing switches and features. We're going to go into under the hood here. So these are the attributes. So I didn't build this one, so I'm just going to go through. So this is, this is the, the mothership component, so to speak. This is, this is the picture frame. So when you right click and you get those options as the, the end user, the happy end user, it's asking you the profile height, the profile width, and you can change the len x, which is the length along x, which I believe in this case is this, and you can change y, which is this. And what's happening is it's collecting all of that information and then it's, it's trickling them down to the children components that are underneath it. And those children components are the corner, the extrusion, which is the, uh, they're calling it this here. And there's a, there's, so there's four corners and probably two extrusions. Yeah, yeah, he's got the short one. I actually didn't build this one. I probably should have shown you a door that I built, but you know, why make my presentation easier? Um, and if we turn on formulas, you can actually see what, what's going on here. So he's, whoever built this is asking for the user to give them the profile height and the profile width, and we're using the scale tool to get the len x and len y. So if you look down at the corner, which it, we'll call it this, this bottom corner here, this corner actually has no numbers in it. It just says equals picture frame len x. So its position, let's, let's move this back up so we can see both here. Should I be able to do this? Yeah. So this corner, its position is frame len x. And frame len x, the size is 24. So this is actually probably, so len x is over here, so it's this corner. And then it's other, so this is actually this top corner. And the other corners, one of them will have zero for its len y. The other one will have len x. This one will be position zero, zero, because it's in the bottom left-hand corner. And this one will be zero and len y. And so the idea with this is that you don't want to put any numbers, if possible, in a child component, because you want to use math, a thing that I'm not very good at, to establish where all of these parts go. Does, it, does, that, does that make sense? OK. Um, so you really have to think differently about how you build components, especially for something like this, with something as simple as a miter. Make sense? All right, so let's look at a couple other components here. What else did I save in this model? Can you resize that real quick? Yeah. Um, oh, I lost it. Here we go. So when you, before you click the scale tool, it's, you see it, you know, smushed. And when you click it, apparently, <laughs> apparently it's broken. Hang on, I think I need to close SketchUp and reopen it. Daisy changes, save. Yeah, and you'll learn too when building dynamic components, sometimes little things like this happen. And sometimes you need to turn SketchUp off and turn it back on and dynamic components will work better. Okay, let's try this. Oh no, 2020 is bad, 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 bad. 
Oh, man, I've there we go. That's what it's supposed to do. So that's because we were asked in the beginning the size of the frame. So I could make this two inches, make this two inches, make it a little thinner. But yeah, that's it. So everything recalculates. You know, it won't recalculate until you, you click the scale tool again. Anyone have any ideas? For those of you, how many, how many people have built a dynamic component? All right, what, what, uh, what's that? You tried? What, you, what were you trying to build? Okay. How much? How much time? All right. We're 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 gonna we're gonna make a we're gonna make a box. Why not? Um, okay. Can I ask one question? Yeah. About that frame? Yes. If you have a frame that is just one component, mm -hmm. you couldn't turn that into a dynamic component that would behave the way you want it to behave. No, because you need to split it up into those into those different pieces. So yeah, you couldn't just like take something and magically make it into a dynamic component, which would be awesome because I would have so many hours left in my life right now. Um, <laughs> no, that's why it's going to take me three hours if, if I, <laughs> if we could just, I will show you guys actually, I'm going to build a real quick one right here um, for you guys, but um, tomorrow we're going to, we're going to get really deep into the nerdiness of, uh, of building them. Um, so, okay, we're, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you a really stupidly simple box and this might help you. So. Uh, our box is going to be kind of like that shelf. It's going to have two sides, a top and a bottom, and that's it. Really, really simple. And we're going to be able to scale it. So I'm going to draw the bottom shelf, and I'm just going to, I'm not really paying attention to the dimension. I'm just going to kind of make it close enough. So I'll make this a component, and I'll call it, you know, bottom, box bottom. Now, uh, how many people have made components before and just ignored, oh, that's all the way over there just ignored most of the stuff in this dialog. Okay. Okay? Uh, yeah, we're, okay, we're just trying to make a repeatable component. We all kind of ignore this stuff. So what you've got to think about is so SketchUp has red, green, and blue axes, right? And that is 0, 0, 0. So 0 on the blue, 0 on the red, 0 on the green. Now, if I just made this a component and I gave this an attribute and I said shelf, go to zero, 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 it's going to look up to its parent to tell it where to go. So if it's, it's really saying, mom, I got to go home. Where, what's my address? So if I told the zero, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to go over here. So we're going to make this component, and we're going to put it in another component, and we're going to tell it to go to the zero of that component. I'm jumping a couple steps ahead here, but the reason why I'm saying this is that I'm going to tell this shelf to be if this box is going to be here, this shelf is going to be at the bottom, back, and as left as possible. And because this um, origin, the axis, appears in the front, I want to move that. And this is going to make more sense. So just bear with me here on this. So I'm actually going to hit set component axis, and I'm going to move it. Wherever my mouse, there it is. I, I know how to use computers, trust me. All right, so we're going to put this here. And now we're okay. Don't worry, we're not going to worry about glue or anything else. We'll just, we'll make that. And let's get Sophie out of here. Nope. Okay, so we got the bottom. And I'm going to make, I'm actually going to, we're going to do, we'll make a side here. And again, I'm just going to put this thing in, make it to some kind of dimension. It's not quite right, but that's okay. So we're going to make component, and we're going to call this side. And... Hang on, I'm gonna make component and we're gonna change its axes to the back corner. And I'm not gonna worry about the other side of the top for the moment, but I'm gonna take these two components and I'm gonna make them a component, okay? And we're gonna call this box. Now, I'm gonna set the axes of this as well to the back corner, like that. Okay, so now we have our, our two components and we have our, what I call the mothership component that's now collecting these two. So we're going we're gonna to right click, we're going to go to dynamic components, and we're going to open up attributes. And we're going to start setting some attributes for this. So the, the parent component, the one that's going to control all these is called box, right? So what box is going to do, it's going to collect information for us that it's going to send down to the other two parts. So 
we're going to want size because to, tell, to define where this side and the bottom is, we need to know the size of the overall shelf that, that we're after. So right now, we'll just put size in here. And we're not going to put position because, again, this is the parent component. So if I tell this thing to go to 0, 0, 0, it's going to move it in your SketchUp model and it's going to be stuck. And you're not going to be able to move it anywhere. So we're going to leave that there. But in the child components, I'm going to add position and I'm going to add size. So I should rename this here. So we're just going to call this side. OK. So we know that the side of our box needs to be at 0, 0, 0, right? So we're going to say, and it's already there. So we're going to say equals 0. And when you put an equal sign in, when, when you don't have an equal sign in, it's grayed out. And that's just saying that's the last known place that it was at. When you put the equal sign in, you're saying that's, that's, the, that's where it's going to be. It's not, it's not going to move from there. So we'll say 0 there as well. Now, for the size, how tall do we want the side of this? Uh, well, OK, that's not the right answer. Oh, the answer oh. is, the answer is, no, I tricked you. I tricked you. So the, the, the answer is. <laughs> We want this side to be as tall as the box. So instead of giving it a dimension, we're just going to say the, the, the um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought, the height of it, which would be len z, because that's along the blue axis, is going to be equal to the height of the parent component, right? So all I have to do is say equals and click on the len z. So now it's going to say that whatever box len z is, that's what it's going to be all the time. So we'll hit tab and put that in there. For the len y, which is going along this direction, that would be the depth of the shelf. We want that to also be the depth of our main box. So we'll do the same thing. We'll say equals len y. Now, len x is the thickness, right? And we, how, so how do we figure that out? We need to ask what the thickness is. And we haven't done that yet. So back in the mothership component, I'm going to put a custom attribute in. And I'm going to say thickness. And I'll just put a number in here. We'll say 0.75. So right now, this is 2.8 inches wide. But if I say equals thickness, and I hit tab, you see how it, it recalculated it? So now we've locked that, that dimension down. So for right now, we're, we're good. This side is, is going to be all set. But we need to deal with the box bottom. So we'll do, again, position and size. And so for the position, if I hit equals 0, you kind of have a problem, right? It's in, well, sorry, I should zoom. Just, just yell if you guys can't see this, and I'll zoom it in. That side is in there. So uh, question, where, what is the dimension that that bottom needs to be? No. Plus the thickness, correct. So yes, but, but that's the way you need to think, though. You can't think 3 quarters of an inch, because if you put in, if I put in 3 quarters, you get, get, get it? And, and, I, I, and the only reason why I'm harping, I made that mistake so many times. That then you have the same number, you copy it all over the place, and it turns into a disaster. So, so sorry, I wasn't trying to set you up for failure. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Well, someone apparently has got a shoe ready back here that they're going to chuck at me if things get out of control. Um, so OK, so for the, the position, we're, we're saying equals thickness. So that, that comes out to 0.75 inches. So you were partially correct. Um, and then for the, so the position y, which is the depth, is going to be 0. That's easy. And the position z, because this is the bottom, is also going to be at the bottom. So that's easy, too. So we'll just say equals 0. And whoops, equals 0. Nope, let's try again. 0 and equals 0. OK. So for the size, now, now, we, need to do, now we need to do some math. So what's the size? What, I'm sorry, what is the len x, which would be the width of the shelf? Nope, because we're going to have two captured ends. So that, so this, this, um, what am I trying to say? The side, okay. So we have a 24-inch wide shelf. Right. I should have defined this earlier. A 24-inch wide shelf is going to have two sides, right. which we'll put the second one in. So that 24 is going to be the outside of it. So that bottom shelf is less than 25. Right. Yes, exactly. So. So perfect. So what you do is you say len x, 
and then you literally say, so how many people have done spreadsheets, Excel spreadsheet formulas? Okay, so this is basic math, and if you can do Excel spreadsheet formulas, you can do these. So we're gonna say len x, and maybe I can blow this up, here we go. So we're gonna say len x minus two times, and I'll say parent underscore, so this would be an Excel referencing another sheet. Um, oh my God, all the girls that are in here are gonna freak out over my Excel knowledge. Um, <laughs> two times parent <laughs> thickness. Yeah, here comes the shoe. I'm sorry, that was, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Uh, this is, he just shut the camera up. This is not going to be on, on YouTube. So two times the parent, two times the parent thickness. So now we have um, 64.813, and that's kind of meaningless at this point. So um, this is going to equal parent len y. You'll stand by. You'll see. You'll see. And so this is going to equal parents len z. Now, I did something, um, no. I did something that I didn't do earlier. I'm using parent instead of the name. So remember I said components always look up for instructions. If you use, let me turn on formula so you guys can see this. You can do this either way. So these bottom two, I said, look at the parent thickness. And these ones, I said, look at box, which is the name of the component that, that is up there. Um, I like to use parent because if I change the name of box, it'll still work. Um, it was because of a really late, frustrating night of building one, and I changed the name of something, and I blew up the entire component, and I had to go change the word box to whatever I change it to somewhere else. My personal preference. Both ways are right, but just thinking ahead, you might not want to blow up a component if you change the name. Um, okay, so now, what's that? Great question. Um, you can't, and you you can. If I was one, this we're going to kind of cover this tomorrow, but just to answer it really quickly, if I I'm only one uh, level deep here. If I was another level deep, let's say I had a book that was on the shelf that I was going to locate in a particular spot, which would be like one more level, and that book needed to know, say, the color of the shelf for some reason, you would have to bring that formula down into this level and then pass that into the next formula. They can only look up to one level. So let's make ourselves another, um, do I copy this? What do I do? Let's make ourselves another. So I've gone into the component. I'm going to make our other side panel here like this. And again, I'm not really paying too much attention to dimension, so we'll just make component. And we'll call this uh, right side. Um, you can. You, so I, I'm just trying to keep this simple for the intro one. Um, you can, yes, but I'm not going to show you right now. I will show you on a, uh, one that's already been in the oven and baking, and we'll, we'll, we'll take it out. Um, so I'm going to again do my uh, bottom left-hand corner um, axes, and we'll call this right side panel. And OK, so now when we go into back into our list, we have that right side panel. So what we can do is start defining where this one is going to be, size. OK, so its position, so here's another trick question. But its position on x, so it, its position over here is going to be. Yes, you're, you're on the right track. So you would say, uh, what I would do, yes, you would say parent len x minus parent, parent thickness. OK, that, that's exactly right. Because, because of where we put the axes. If you had it on the other side, you wouldn't have to do that. Um, so that's my, you can do it either way. That's my personal preference is to have them all, like on something that's very repeatable like this, put all the axes in the same, you know, the same way. Um, so the position y, which is the depth, again, that's really simple. We'll have it at zero. We'll have that one at zero. The, it's, um, it's height off the ground. So the size, len x, is going to be, the len x would be the width. Yep, so it'll be, it'll be thickness. So we're talking, Len X, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, trying to, sorry. no, it's fine. I'm, I'm trying to get you guys thinking. Yes, and, and that's what, the little, little tip, because you, you are going to have to think in, 
you're going to have to think in axes. So what, the reason why I did this in this demo and why I'm asking the questions a little differently is because I didn't say width of the shelf. I said, what's len x? Because that's how you're going to have to start thinking. And when I modeled this, it just, we kind of lucked out. But I do this on purpose, having them here as a constant reminder so I can think of you know, the, the right one. Um, if any, anyone know about sticky components, you know, the, the gluing components that go on walls? So just to kind of get you in the thought process of that, if I was going to make this stick to a wall, I would have drawn it down because the Z is the one that makes it glue. So just kind of getting yourself in the right, you don't want to like turn it the wrong other way because then you'll be, have two axes in your head and it becomes, becomes a pain. So this is the, the thickness. And the depth is parent len y. And the height is parent. OK, so now, now we actually have a shelf here. Oh, did I blow it up? Oh, I did. Thank you. I thought I, I, thought I blew up my. There we go. OK. So now, now that we've done all the, I, we won't bother with the top panel. That's going to be kind of repetitive. But now we want to make this a little bit friendlier to you or the user, however you're going to be giving this to, right? So right now, if we go into dynamic components and options, which is the fun thing that we saw earlier, we don't have, we don't have any options, right? So we can define those. So we can go to dynamic components and attributes. And so I'm going to put these next to each other. And watch what happens. So the len x, you're not going to ask, if you're giving this to a, a designer or a customer maybe who's configuring your product, you're not going to ask them, what is the len x of the shelf you'd like to order? You're going to ask them, how wide is the shelf, right? Because that's what they care about. So you can click this little guy here, and you can set up how it's going to appear to the user. So we're going to say users can edit this as a text box. And instead of len x, we're going to call it shelf width. And we're going to let them, whatever model units they're in, it's going to display in that. And we'll hit apply. So now if you look at this, uh, whatever that's called, the component options box, we now have a little friendlier dialogue that, that we can put in there. Um, same thing with len y, which is the depth. Let's do something a little different. Let's say that we have certain depths that we offer. We can't, we can't just make it at any depth. So we can say they can pick this from a list. So we'll say depth. And we'll add an option for 12 inch, and 16 inch, and 24 inch. And we'll hit apply. So now we have a little drop down there. And for the len z, we'll make that one simple. We'll just kind of go in and say, they can edit this as a text box. We'll call this height. And let them do it in their, their model unit. So now, if I change this to, to a 16 inch depth shelf, well, that wasn't that dramatic. We'll go to 24 everything changes. And we have a nice little friendly drop-down dialogue. I can type in the width here so we can make this a little more reasonable, 24, so we can actually blow it up like that. So that, that is in a nutshell. How much time do I have left? Cool. All right, so that is in a nutshell how to build um, dynamic components. Twice. What's that? OK. Um, how, how, all right, so the, the, we, putting in a price is easy. Um, I, that's, I can literally do it like this. So we can just say, it costs two beers. Oh, this is brilliant. OK, this is how we're going to do a price. Ready? Um, oh, I might have just gotten myself into something. That, OK, so we're going to call this price. But instead of just, and we're going to display this to the user. So we're going to say that the user can see this price, but they, they can't edit it. The price is going to be derived off of a math formula uh, based on the size of the shelf. So we got a price there. So price is going to equal, oh man, how can I do this? Price is going to equal, yes. So what we're going to do, all right, we're, I'm gonna, we're going to get, we're going to get near, we're going to round. We're going we're gonna to use, OK, actually, this is, this is great. There are all, remember I said earlier, I didn't, I just, I'm making this up as I go along. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Normally, I do slides and presentations, but whenever I teach SketchUp, I just do SketchUp. Um, this is actually the first time I've taught dynamic components. So remember I said you can do spreadsheet formulas, right? Um, there's a great resource on the SketchUp website where you can look up the formulas and all the examples of formulas. But there's also a drop down in here 
that you can pick from all of these lists of formulas. So there, there are math formulas. Um, there are SketchUp functions. You can do some stuff to SketchUp geometry. Uh, text functions. Really exciting, right? Um, we're going to do a math function, so we're going to want to. We want to make some money on the shelf, right? We don't want to get. We don't want to get screwed on our pricing, so we're going to say, "Is ceiling." So what this is going to do, it's going to take the ceiling of a number. So if you divided, oh man, you guys, I'm really not good at math. So if you divided a number into another number and the result was 2.1, the ceiling formula is going to go to three. It's going to go up to the next whole number. So we're going to take. We're going to say that we're going to charge per foot uh, of width on the shelf, OK? So I like to break these out into two different formulas. So I'm actually going to put um, width, we'll call this foot count. OK. So I'm going to take the width of it, which is len x, and I'm going to divide it by 12. So right now, that answer is a, a, a totally um, round 2. But if I take this shelf, I make it 30 inches wide, now that number is 2.5, OK? Um, the reason why I, don't, I could have packaged this whole thing into one formula, but I kind of like debugging, so I'll break things out into separate, uh, separate formulas. So now for the price, we're going to say equals ceiling. And for the number, we're going to say foot count. And we're going to say significance 1. So it's going to round, round what I said before. It's going to go up to the next whole number. And can we do, we should be able to make this a dollar amount. Actually, I have never made a dynamic component that does uh, prices. So we're going to say, this is the first. There we go, $3. So now what we could do is let's say we're not going to charge $3 a foot. So we're going to take this formula, and we're going to put it in brackets. Wait, no, we, we don't even need to put it in brackets. We can say. How much are we going to charge per foot? $30. $30, perfect. So we're going to take that number and charge it by $30. So now, if I make this 31 inches, here, let's go back. We'll make it 24. So now, now we, can look at the, we can look at the formula. So a, a, a dead-on two-foot wide shelf is two feet, because we just did that really simple calculation. That works out to, because it's $30 a foot, $60, right? If I made this one 31, uh, or rather, one more inch bigger, so 25 inches, it's going to go to the next linear foot because we decided that we're going to use this. Does that, does that make sense? OK, cool. Um, I have like five more minutes left, so I'm going to show you what we could possibly learn tomorrow. This is, um, so I, I, this, is, this is my methodology and the way that I build these things. And to take this to like a really insane level, if we look at how I built some of these components, which appear to be just kind of boring little boxes. Let me get these dialogs back open here for you. So we'll go to options. And so, OK, so that's the options list that you saw before. Let's take a look at the attributes. Um, so this dynamic wall, uh, raise your hand if you're familiar with Outliner. Anyone? OK, cool. We got a couple of Outliner fans. So this. This, this is the main parent component, and these are all the different things that I collect. Because what I, I, I designed a whole cabinet line in these things, and I wanted, to, I wanted to make them as universal as possible, so I thought of every single thing that I could ever possibly ask a user. Um, and if we turn on formulas here, it gets really ridiculous, too. Um, th there's, there's all these things in here. And then, so then you have, a, you have a cabinet box, and then you have a face frame assembly, which is your, your face frame and, and your door. And I reuse that face frame over and over again in this cabinet line. So I, instead of having a bunch of pieces and parts, I wanted to have these things as separate little modules. So if I update my face frame, I don't have to fix it on every single cabinet. I can like pull it out and put a new one in. And that's why that parent thing that I was telling you about, I use parent all the time because the name of this cabinet is different than the name of this cabinet. But if I use parent and I swap out parts in between, they're still going to get the right formulas because I used a universal naming scheme on all of these. So if we click into one of these here and we go, <coughs> oh, why this dialog is not working? I mean, these, these get really, really, I mean, some of these formulas get really, really intense. Yeah, I mean, that this is. 
I, I go back to some of these. I mean, th this, is, I, this is not a joke. This actually works. Um, it, yeah, this is, I don't even know, really know what to say about it. But yeah, th these get pretty insane. And it's all, but you can see, if you look at these formulas, this probably looks all Greek to you. And I'll be honest, it kind of looks Greek to me until I go back and debug them. But you can see there's, there's a big lack of numbers here because everything is looking up to the thing to get the numbers from the, from the mothership. The only time you'll see numbers is twos because with cabinet boxes, there's a lot of twos. And that was a little ridiculous to reference to when it's, it's always going to be a box. Um, anyone have any questions before we wrap up? <laughs> so, sorry, did, did I like today? <laughs> yeah, I, I, we only have five minutes. So uh, sorry, the question over here? You know, the, the, honestly, the, the way I started um, getting crazy formulas like this is just copying from other people's components. Um, and you can learn a lot from, you can honestly learn a lot from Excel spreadsheets. And, and I would do um, sometimes, I, I, I particularly attracted to dynamic components because there's, there's ma oddly just math involved, but you can see it happen visually. You know, like when I typed in the width, you see it happen in SketchUp right away. If you think, I, I did a couple times with these formulas pull them out and copy them into an Excel spreadsheet just so I could see the numbers. And then you can test them really quickly. So that might be another way to figure them out. But the best, the what's it? Yeah, the, the formulas work. Um, Google Spreadsheets works really well, too. Where are your components? Are they available? They're, in, they're actually in a, a kitchen design plugin um, that, I, that I created. You, you, you mentioned it. I saw you sent an article. You mentioned it. Yep. So where is it? Have you heard from it? Yeah. Yes, that's no, that's <laughs> that, no, that's totally correct. So all you need to know, all, no, great question. All you need to know, and that's why you know the, the, we, when you build these components, you the, you try to obfuscate the user from touching. Your, your users should never touch that stuff because if you're touching things in there, and you know what you're doing, you can completely blow up a component. I've had people use it, and they're like, "Oh, we got in there, we changed the formulas." It's like, just delete it and start over. It's you just you you broke it. But this is where you want to make it happy and fun and easy for people to type in dimensions and get, get the results that they want. So, so yes, if you're going to build them, you're going to have to deal with the other stuff. But if you're going to use them, you just deal with this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's so interesting. So I cheated, and I'll tell you what I did. Um, so to, if I told you guys how to build this box, the way, this is the way I originally built these things. Um, I made a, I'll just, I'll just tell you over here. Thank you very much for coming. Really appreciate it.